sure if I'm going to do this in regular time or if I will actually just fast forward through this and I'll do a voiceover perhaps. So I'll talk through this part and then if necessary I will mute this and come back to it later. So I'm using my Micron Point 2. I'm using Jumbo Twin Tone in the pastel pack. It's one of the blues. I don't know if it has a formal name or not. I will also be using my Tombow Dual Tip in 451 and I'll most likely be using the Hard Tip uh, Tombow Fudinuski. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly or not. So those will be the main markers and pens that I'll be using and I will make a note of them over here in, in just a bit. So in general I like to keep my bullet journal quite minimal. I don't do a lot of extra decorations and things in it as I mentioned in my setup video, but I might add some stickers, I might add a few things into it later on and time will tell. So I like these little notes here for my goals, my tasks, and just some extra notes. And I just use some stupid little credit card advertising thingy that Comcast sent us a while back and I didn't need it for anything else so I thought it just works out perfectly it's a nice size I'm thinking I likely will do this as a voiceover because I seem to just be sitting here quietly and going back over my little pencil or pencil notes that I made. So doing a voiceover will be something that'll be something new for me to learn. And then I just keep this little guy in the pouch at the back of my journal so that I have it available to me. And I'll go back after and erase all of my pencil marks. I'll just leave it as as is for now and I'll come back and do that once the ink is all dry. I'm usually not always the most patient person and I've I've smudged that one's messy. I've smudged quite a few things smudged quite a few things in the past by doing it too too impatiently. So my goals, uh, specific tasks that I need to get done, and, and notes. So a few of the notes that I like to make here is mark down which pens I'm using. If I put them aside someplace, I tend to completely forget which one I've used. So 
so I'll just mark down these colors. The rest of these pens that I have out, you will see what I use those for a little bit later on. So this is the first couple pages. So again, I penciled this out and now I'm going to go back through and go over it. Maybe I'll start off the year using a ruler. I don't usually tend to last long using the ruler. I tend to I tend to just do my lines freehand. And this is why, because I can't seem to do this very well without. I think as I mentioned in my other video, I'm not, not a hugely perfectionist when it comes to doing this, so I'm okay if my lines are a little bit crooked and wonky. Life is kind of crooked and wonky. Now let's see if I can do this without having to turn the book sideways. I do want to. And it's easier doing it from this direction. The squares that I'm making are six by six dots. And I know a lot of people prefer using their monthly calendar just down as a list down here, but for some reason my brain just prefers seeing it as a full calendar. When I see them just lined up just in one column, I really have trouble seeing and picturing what what has to be done on any particular day. So I much prefer to have the traditional calendar set up like this. Then I can just see at a really quick glance exactly what what has to be done on any any given day coming up in the month. And what I tend to do each month when I'm setting up this calendar is I will go back to my future log and I will see what I have written down from earlier that I've I've come back to, or that I'll have to come back to. So I'll just take a quick look at what's listed on my future log and then I'll come back to add it into my calendar, this calendar each day or each each month as it comes up. Just adding on the numbers here for all of the days of the week or all the days in the month. I won't do much talking here because I'll probably end up messing it up. So there we have my January calendar set up. I might come back in later and add a few more decorations to this page, but I'll wait until later and I'll come back through because I know that I have a few things I have. An all day meeting at work here. I have to take my car to the garage on Wednesday. And classes start up again here. 
So now I have a few things. I also have a doctor's appointment one of the Fridays. I, I think it's on the 18th, but again, I'll go into last year's um, I'll go into last year's future log and see what I've added in for January. So I think it might be on the 18th. But anyway, I'll come back to that. So I'll probably add some decorations here. I'll find some stickers or or something. I'll come back to that. I'll show you what I ended up doing decorating for it a little later in the month or if I get it done before I'm ready to publish this video. So my next spread that I want to do is my January 2019 gratitude page. And what I like to do is just add a little, I set up the calendar exactly the same way I set up this calendar and six by six squares four on the one page, three on the next page. And I just like to jot down a little a little something for each of the days. Sometimes I decorate these up, use different colored uh, pencil crayons and do little decorations or maybe some doodles. Uh, more often than not, I just do simple coloring on there. Cause I just don't tend to do a whole lot of decorating in my journal. So I'm going to, same thing I did with the last one, I'm just going to freehand draw all the lines on here. And on this one, I didn't, I didn't draw the boxes out in pencil with as much detail as I did on the previous page. So these I've just done little marks in the corners to show where, where my boundaries are supposed to be. So I'm filming this on Monday, December 31st, so I typically like to get my monthly spreads done up a little bit in advance, and that is a goal that I have this year to, to really try to be a little bit more on top of getting this done and keeping up with it. This is part of my, if you watched my 2019 setup video, you'll know that my my theme and my goal for the year is to have more self-discipline and I think by spending more time with my bullet journal and paying attention to what I'm doing in my bullet journal it's part of the self-discipline just doing that but at the same time it's also going to be something that's going to I imagine help me become more productive, which is what I want to achieve this year as well. And part of the self-discipline is just helping me to become more productive or remain productive. A few days ago I saw somebody had posted a link somewhere on Facebook to do one of these little quizzes that is supposed to help you find out. I'm not, oh, I'm smudging this. Oh well. And like I said I'm not a perfectionist about about this. But anyway, so they had posted a link to. I think it was some type of Bible study web page. I. I don't recall now where where it was. I, I should have should have paid attention to that. But anyways, I did this little quiz, and it said that my my word for the year, I guess in biblical senses or based on this this devotional page that I had gone to, was gratitude. So I thought that was really really interesting, kind of kind of neat. So I thought, well. Maybe I should make a point of doing a gratitude log each and every month throughout the year. I have done these frequently in the past and I rarely stick with it for the entire month. Never mind doing it for an entire year. So we shall see how I do with this. But I'm kind of hoping that if I start doing these monthly plan with me videos with you guys that 
I will be more consistent in doing this and so that by having to report back to you guys every month or however often, it will help to motivate me to keep track of and keep up with working on this all the time. So we shall see how that goes. Okay, so there we have my gratitude log for January 2017, or 2017, oh my goodness, I just lost two years, guys. My gratitude log for January 2019. Never mind mistakes, making mistakes and writing down 2018 here and there. <laughs> I just completely missed 2018, I've gone all the way back to 2017. Good grief. Already, so I'm likely going to decorate this up a little bit. There's a little bit of space here. I'll decide on that as, as I go. So now, here are a couple trackers that I have been using for a few months now. And they are ones that I find quite helpful. And they're also, they're quite, um, they're quite telling about areas in my life where I'm lacking and areas where I really do need to start being a little bit more focused and being more focused and also making sure that I'm aiming towards hitting goals that I, I want and need to hit. So this one is my activity log and I, I have a Fitbit that I wear all the time. So it records the number of steps that I do in a day, the number of minutes of activity I have. Then I also want to log whether I've gone to the gym, whether I've done any weight training while I was at the gym, if I've rode my exercise bike that I have at home, and if I've meditated. So each of these have a different way of indicating it. So for steps, it'll be just a no the number of steps that I have. Active will be my Fitbit records the minutes of activity where my heart rate's been up over a certain amount. Um, for the other trackers, I'm going to use it as a yes or no, whether I did it or whether I did not do it. And I like to color code this page to give me a quick look at how I'm doing. Now, for the yes and no things, I use a marker. And green is yes, I did it. Red is stop, no, I did not do it. And I just put a dot, either a green dot that yes, I did meditate, or a red dot, no, I did not meditate that particular day. When I'm doing my trackers for my steps and whether I've had active minutes or not, I like to use a series of three colored pencils. And I just use my Crayola Twistables. This cheap little set of pencil crayons that I bought quite a while back. And I have certain levels where if I've done poorly in a day, I'll mark it as red. And that's supposed to kind of get my attention and indicate that I've not done well that day. Yellow is more of cautionary. I kind of think about these as the, the, the lights that you see, traffic lights, that's what I'm looking for. Yellow is caution, I'm, I'm starting to slack a little bit and that I might need to bump it up. Green is if I've done good. Go ahead, I'm, I'm doing good. So for my steps, if I've done more than 10,000 steps in the day, I'll color, this, I'll color that block in green. If I have between 5,000 and just shy of 10,000 steps, that's yellow. So I've done medium. I've not done as well as I should have. If I've done less than 5,000 steps, that's red. That's a bad day. I have been very inactive. Similarly for my minutes of activity for a day, if I've done more than 30 minutes, that's green. If I've done zero minutes, so basically if I've sat on my push the entire day or I have not done anything enough to get my heart rate up for any time during the day. It's just that at a resting heart rate. I color that in red. 
and if I've done somewhere in between, so 1 to 29 minutes of activity, I'll color that in in yellow. Um, I'll talk about my sleep log in just a minute when I get to that one. So this one I do want to use my ruler to, to draw these lines out. Now I like to mark down what day of the week it is. to do just a quick little indicator here for each week. So I'm just going to do a little quick dashed line across here between Sunday and Monday each week. So as I was mentioning, I just do a quick little, a quick little dot if it was a yes or no, whether I did the activity or not. So in these, green is good. is a little bit more caution I haven't done quite as well and red is stop I need to I need to pay attention and do more so at the end of the month in each of these columns or in these two columns in particular I want to see mostly green some yellow and very little red if i've had a bad month there's a lot of red on here and that so that's an indicator that i've not been very active with these i want to see green somewhere whether i it's highly unlikely i'll use go to the gym work with weight training and bike all on the same day quite unlikely so i'd like to see green in at least one of these columns each day and meditating that's something I've added on to here this year it's something I haven't done much in the past but something I want to do more of now my next tracker is my sleep log and I've started doing this for several months my Fitbit records what I've been doing for sleep or how my sleep has been each night and it's something that I have started logging on a regular basis because I often find that I'm, I'm really tired 
and that I want to keep track of that and try to make sure I'm getting enough sleep. So again, I'm going to use my ruler to draw out my lines. And then I'll explain each of these columns in just a minute once I'm once I put this information down. I get the lines down, I should say. I'm just going to go across and mark down the end of each week. Now, the things that I track here is the time that I get into bed, the time I get up in the morning, now with the Fitbit it records the total number of hours of sleep you had, but it factors in the hours that you were awake. Now this one I'm not a hundred percent in agreement with. It records if you are restless during the night, if you, it, it actually records if you've rolled over during the night. And I don't s crawl into bed and lay down in one position and never move the rest of the night. So it usually has me awake anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half or more during the night. So I am keeping track of that to get an indication of how well I'm sleeping or how I'm not sleeping. It also records the amount of time that you are in deep sleep, light sleep, or REM sleep. So I like to keep track of that and just kind of have an idea of what my sleep looks like. And what I've been finding in the last while is that it's very rare that I have more than eight hours sleep. In order for me to get eight hours sleep, I usually have to be in bed between, have to be in bed for over nine hours. Um, to nine and a half hours. So I keep track the same way I do, the same type of way I do, I have been doing with my activity, where I color code it with red, yellow, and green. And for me, I want to indicate when I've had more than eight hours sleep in green. If I've had between seven and eight hours sleep, will be yellow. And if I've had under seven hours sleep, I will mark that in in the red. And those are the nights that I'm not getting nearly enough sleep. And this is the call. <clears throat> excuse me. This is the only column that I color in. So the total hours of sleep. So whether I've had less than seven hours, if I've had between seven and eight, I mark that in as yellow. <coughs> and if I've had more than eight hours sleep is green. So for this one, I'm actually, I'm, I'm aiming for more than eight hours sleep, but it's very unusual that I get over eight hours sleep unless it's when I'm on vacation 
and I don't have the alarm set and I can just sleep in as long as I want to. That's my first doodling in here. <laughs> see, see what I mean? I, I don't do a lot of doodling in here, although I might start doing more later, but I typically do just keep it fairly, uh, fairly simple. <coughs> now the next two pages are my diet pages. So on this page, I'm, what I'm logging and recording is what I've done in terms of my weight. And as I talked about in my 2019 setup video, I am actively trying to lose weight this year. I've tried many years to actively try to lose weight, but this year I really want to have, again, the self-discipline to to stick with that and to accomplish a respectable weight loss for the year. I think what I'll do is I'll draw the lines on this page while I'm at it. On the second, well, I'll, I'll talk about the second page in just a bit. This is potentially one that I might not be showing a lot of the details later in the month with how I've done and what the actual numbers are because that is something that I do kind of think I want to keep that that private. I'm just indicating along this column, I'll put the dates here, and in this one, again, I'm going to be using my red, yellow, green color scheme. If I've had a loss, I, I, what the plan is is I will weigh in every morning, and if I've lost weight, that's good, I will mark that as green. If my weight has stayed the same, I have not gained, I have not I have not lost in a particular day or from a particular day I will mark that as yellow and if I've gained weight over a day it will be marked in red and I recognize that weighing in each and every day is not necessarily the the best option and I do know that my weight will it does and it will fluctuate from from day to day and I'm not going to be viewing this where if I have red on here, I'm not necessarily going to be viewing that as really, really bad. I do have one um, a category here where I make notes. So if I've gone out, if I've eaten out at restaurant food, things like that, I will mark that down. So if I do see a gain the next morning, I can possibly attribute that to there was more sodium than I'm used to. Or, or something so it is something to that I do keep in mind
So the things that I'm going to be tracking in these columns is my weight. So each morning I will check my weight. I will mark down what my daily loss, hopefully, was. I don't know if it'll be every day and I, I don't expect it'll be something at every day. My scale does go in, I think it's point 0.1 or maybe I'll have to double check. I don't even remember what my scale measures in. Um, my month to date, so this will be a cumulative total so I know if I've lost 5 pounds, 10 pounds, whatever, over the month. And then my total loss. So these two columns are going to be the same this, this month. Next month when I start my next one, the total loss will continue on from the total from the end of January will be the first, will be added to the entry from the beginning of February. So, and again, if I've lost weight, I'll just mark in each of these little boxes down here. Then what I have done in the past, and it's worked well for me and I've enjoyed it, is following um, a keto type of eating plan. I don't necessarily stick to it extra strictly. I probably would classify myself more as being lazy keto where I mostly track my my carbs only and I'm not as as strict on my macros on my other macros so my my fat and protein consumption so what I'm going to do probably for January I do want to try to stick to it quite quite carefully and um, that is something that I'm going to be tracking this month as well. And this is something that might change up in subsequent months. I'm not sure if I will continue with this one beyond January, but we'll see. I might only track my, my carbs. And what I do is I have an app on my phone where I will record everything that I eat during a day and that that does a calculation at the end of the day for all the different numbers. So it will record what the carbs are, what the fat, the, the grams of carbs that I've consumed, the grams of uh, fiber, net carbs, which is your carbs minus fiber. It also will tell me what the the number or the grams of fat and the grams of protein. And it'll also record and keep track of the number of calories as well, which is also something that is important to, to keep track of. We're almost at the end. And my January habit tracker. So several of my habits are going to be tracked here. So my number of steps, my activity, meditation, sleep, those types of habits are going to be tracked already. So I have some additional ones that I want to track.
and I'll come back in just a couple minutes once I've drawn all the lines and done the, some of the little tedious bits here. And I'll explain what, what I'm including in here. Honestly, I'm surprised I got this close to the end without making a mistake. So, here's my favorite little... It's my Signo... I think it's a Signo. Yeah. Signo Uniball in white. And I just go in there and... It's like the equivalent of whiteout. It's not a perfect match to the paper color, but... I'm not that worried about it. Let's try not to do it again on the next ones, though. So again, if you watched my setup video, I'll link to the setup video down in the <laughs> whichever direction it is. Um, if you watch that, you will know that I had some long-term goals that I had set for the entire year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log those on my daily habits and I'll also I will go back and fill them in on on these these pages as well but one of the things I want to do is post more regularly on Instagram I want to log when I post YouTube videos I want to make sure that I'm more vigilant on flossing my teeth I'm putting floss and brush because uh, I'll do them at the same time. I'm good with the brushing, but the flossing, I, I'm a little bit more negligent with that. So I want to make sure that I'm focusing more on that. One of my other habits that I want to do is do morning pages every day. So I will I'll work on that as well. I'm also planning on reading through the entire Bible this year, so I want to keep track of making sure that I've done that each day. I want to spend more time actually using my bullet journal every day. I want to do more reading for fun, so I'm going to mark down if I've done any reading, and I want to try to get more water in each day. I'm usually not too bad for drinking water, but I want to make sure that I'm getting enough. So if I've had 64 or more ounces of water, or that's my goal, is to drink 64 or more ounces of water in a day. So I'm just going to get the numbers on here. Hand is getting sore. Uh, half done. Thinking maybe in the future I'm just going to leave them blank so I can figure out 1 through 10. I hope. Okay, here we go with that one. And I'm going to find something to do with this page. I I haven't decided on that yet, but I'll come up with some kind of quote. I don't know. I'll, I'll do something with that after. Now I'm ready to start my first weekly spread. And I kind of do 
guess you could probably call them a weekly spread. Um, I kind of combine the weekly and daily together. And usually what I've, I've done, I forget who I saw doing this first, but I divide the page in half each, each way. So I end up with eight squares. I leave this one alone. And then I do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday across the seven spaces. And then I sometimes will put something in here. I might start using a mood tracker. I'm not sure on that one. I'm, I'm still contemplating that. But I haven't quite decided what I do with that. And then I just have my different tasks for each day on here. So since the first is starting on a Tuesday, I'm going to have actually this whole half a page here is going to be is going to be free and so I'll start on Tuesday and a lot of people start they've got December 31st on here that's still in my old journal that's fine I'm we're finished with today almost it's getting into almost the evening now so I'm just going to start it from from Tuesday and here's where I'm finally going to start adding a little bit of color to my page I did say a little bit <laughs> This might not be enough. Well, that's showing up not too badly. So that's using my Tombow Dual Tip or Dual, yeah, dual Brush in 451. And then what I tend to do is mark it like so. And then with my Twin Tone that I'm using this month. That's, I don't want that end, I want this end. So there we have it. I'm going to come back and do something in here. I will, I'll be able to show you that. So I'm probably not 100% ready, but there we have it. I'm going to let the rest of these pages dry. I'm going to go and create a mountain of eraser dust. I'm going to go back through and erase these and I'll be back in a few minutes and I will show you what it looks like all, all erased and pretty.